embracing vulnerability really is stop caring so much what other people think of you. And that's the thing that holds so many people back. We're afraid of judgment. Run, run, run into discomfort. The first rule. Amen. Yeah. Right? Run, 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 run. Because it, it allows you to show yourself what you're made of, but also it allows you to be the shield for other people. Don't let any excuse prevent you from getting started. So I want to call up to the stage the one, the only Evan Carmichael. Evan, the, the question that I would love to start with, this totally when we were having lunch today, blew my mind. Right? And so you're talking about your channel and, and how much time you put into it, how much energy you put into it. Uh, it it's your life. If it wasn't making a dollar, you said, you would still put the same amount of energy, effort, and time in every single day. And I think that's such an important thing because there's so many people here that are embarking on new projects. And, and just to be able to explain the importance of loving and being immersed in what you do would be really cool. Yeah, so hey, first off, I'm pumped for you, man. You know, I'm, Eddie's been, uh, how long have we known each other? Five years, four years? Something like Something that. Like that. Five. And he, when he reached out and said, if I want to do my, this, this chair is cool. So. <laughs> you gotta be careful. It's cool. Um, like, I'm so pumped that he's getting into a lot of events and that he's, he's thinking bigger and doing uh, stepping outside his comfort zone back to lesson number one, you know, embrace his comfort. So, pumped for you and thank you, I'm honored to be here uh, to close us off. Sure. Listen, uh, there's been a lot of people talking about, about purpose, there's been a lot of people talking about going through all of their struggles and the stories have been inspiring and I've been, I've been taking notes and having fun at the back. Your purpose comes from your pain, right? Like, how do you find your purpose? Great. Everybody says, find your purpose. Great, how do we do it? And for those of you who don't maybe know a little bit about me, um, I have a YouTube channel of about a million subscribers, 300 million views, and I do profiles of tons of successful different entrepreneurs, point them up from their success and break it down. So I've studied more successful entrepreneurs than most people. Uh, so I break down the rules and give it to you guys. And the thing that comes up over and over and over and over again is this question of how do you find your passion? So how do you do it? What's the process? Your purpose comes from your pain. Whatever you struggle the most with is the thing that you want to help other people with. And typically, as entrepreneurs, we can be optimistic and positive and forward-thinking, and we don't want to think about the pain and what we went through. And the point isn't to live in that pain, but the point is to get out of it and then make the world a better place, right? To, I don't know if Terrence is still in the room, but Terrence is going through the hero's journey. I just walked in. Good timing, man. Uh, it's going through the hero's journey, right? You have all these struggles, and you find a mentor, you walk through all these crazy things, and then you're celebrated at the end. But the piece that I would add at the very end of that is great, you're celebrated, and now you give back. And now you teach other people how to do it. So I struggled so much as an entrepreneur. My first business, I was 19. I was making $300 a month. I was, you know, I was broke, I had no money. I was, I was trying to figure out how to make this thing go. And I quit on my business partner. It was the worst day of my life. And I said, I love that. It's the best. Um, I said, I can't, I can't keep doing it this way. Like, I felt worthless as a human to hear me say, I quit on something I cared about. And so I said, I gotta figure out another way to stand. And so I asked myself, who else has built a software company? I looked at Bill Gates, left his story, and applied those lessons. Started making money in my business. Um, and so, because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur, now I want to help out other, um, other entrepreneurs. For life, like that never gets old. So whatever you struggle the most with is who you will want to help for the rest of your life. And then how did you get out of the hole? Is something that isn't just unique to you, it's teachable. You can help other people through the same path that you took. So I struggled as an entrepreneur. The thing that Satan was modeling Bill Gates' success. How did he build Microsoft to zero to one? I don't care if he makes an extra million now, right? Zero to one is what I wanted to do. Studied that, applied it to myself, started getting success, and for the past 20 years, all I've been doing is teaching other people how to model success. My purpose comes from my pain, and then the how of how I got out of it is something that now I can teach other people, and it's the greatest gift. And so, I was telling Eddie over lunch that I would, I would keep doing it for me. I need my channel for myself. It's fulfilling. And if it never made a dollar, then I would have to find another way to support myself, but I would keep doing this. And that becomes the acid test. If you're ever, if you're ever showing up on Monday, you're like, oh, you gotta leave. And, and
And too often, and if that's a job you can relate to a couple that go, oh my gosh, you gotta go to And I'm not saying you have to quit right away because you have to still pay the bills and rent and internet and all that stuff, it's important. But if that's ever your business, when you show up on Monday and you're not pumped to go do the thing that you're supposed to do, then, then you, have to, you have to switch. And too, too many entrepreneurs, those who've been in the game for a while, you end up buying yourself a job. Where then it was exciting before, but now it's five years in, you're still doing the same thing for a creative type. It's a destiny. So that's it. I think you have to pay attention to your energy. If Monday morning you're showing up and you have low energy, you have to find something else. I still love making videos. But the day that I've done, I started YouTube April 2009, so over 10 years ago, I've done five, 6,000 videos across multiple channels. I still like making videos. But the day that I stop liking videos, I'm gonna do something else. Because you'll never win doing work that you hate. So what was your process for getting there? Because you came from a pretty conventional background, um, at least according to some of the, the bios I've seen, um, where you, you know, went to college, you were thinking about financial services, and you pivoted, you know? Was it, was it a learning, was it experimentation, or was it, you made videos right out of the gate, you were lucky, and you're like, you know, this is something that I love and I'm going all in. So, I started videos as an experiment. I think we need to taste more, test more. Right. Like, how do you know the thing that you're supposed to do? Well, you won't know by just even sitting here. You gotta go off and experiment, right? My boy, Devazio over here, we're, we're talking outside, so he's, he's driving a truck, and can I share the story, you mind? So he's driving a truck, and he wants to help uh, inspire a lot of kids to have a little more respect, because he grew up wanting to have a father figure with teaching him a little more respect. So he said, well, I don't know how to, I don't know, I listen to the podcast all day long, I don't, I don't have time to actually go off and do something, because he's in this truck. He's like, listen, first off, the fact that you're already consuming education instead of entertainment, you're already way ahead of most of America. Most people spend their time just binging on Netflix instead of listening to podcasts, watching his videos, my videos. But now you've got to just listen to the podcast, just watch your hands, it's not enough, you've got to do something. I was like, well, what do I do? Like anything. Like the thing that's missing for most people is just momentum. You can have all the, I think, I think as a starting point, everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something. Like you're the best in the world at something. The best in the world at something. The thing that's missing is momentum. What's the next step? Something. So I said, Go on Instagram Live and coach somebody from your truck. Do you know anybody who can, who can coach? Like, yeah, yeah, I think I got a guy. I go, great. So message him and say, what are you doing on Monday? Can I coach you from my truck? It's like, and then the immediate responses are, well, I don't know how to get on Instagram. Okay, great. <laughs> and this is just, this is everybody. This is like, don't laugh at him, laugh at yourself. This is all of us, right? Like we come up with the reasons why. We're looking for the reasons why you can't do it. Great, I don't know how to get on Instagram. Awesome. Like go to Google, ask somebody here how to create an Instagram account. Right? Well, he might be in school. Okay, great. So you're driving truck all day long. There's got to be an hour somewhere where you can do it. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, that can make sense. Okay, so message him. Yeah, yeah, I will. Oh, like right now. Right now? Yeah, message him. And he did. Right there on the balcony. Right up, right outside on the balcony. He messaged him. And then, and then he wrote back. Right? He wrote back like right away. So on Monday, did you figure out a time? Not yet. So figure out a time today too. Pressure's <laughs> on. Right? So on Monday, you know, he's going to be driving truck from here to South Carolina to Ohio or wherever, and somewhere in there he's going to go live and do his first Instagram. Right? And listen, like nobody's going to show up. That's okay. Right? Like at the start, expect to suck. Nobody's going to show up, and you're not going to be very good at it. Like why do you expect to be great the first time you try something? I think this is a big problem. I think we need to have a conversation around it. You expect to make a video and crush it the first time out. Right? Like, you should expect to suck at the beginning. If you don't suck, then, then you should have started five years ago. Like, if you make a video, if his first IG Live isn't totally embarrassing for the first 15 minutes, I'm actually pissed. Because, like, you should have started that three years ago. Right? Like, you're supposed to suck at the beginning. So, he's going to go off and do his first IG Live. And I said, you know what? This is the step. Like, if you went 
and did this every week. Driving truck, coaching young men, teaching about respect, one hour every Monday, you'll be on stage at the next year old life. Yeah? You'll be on stage for next year. But that's, that's how it happens. That's how it happens for people who are, who are ambitious to create something and are taking in all the knowledge, but without momentum, you stay where you are. And you don't know what the first step is. Maybe, maybe that is not the path. Right? Maybe it's better, I suggest if he has somebody drive next to him. So like he drives in the truck and there's some kid next to him takes a six hour drive and he coaches him and films him. Right? There could be a thousand iterations of that, but the key is just to, to go and test. Like how do you know until you do it? And you don't pay attention to the results, you pay attention to did I enjoy the process? Did I love it? I sucked at it, but did I love it? Because if you love it and you keep doing it, you'll get better at it. So I just, I love doing small tests. So I just started on YouTube. I just made a video. I never, when I started in April 2009, YouTube was a different beast. There was no Eddie Pinero. There was no like motivational content. There was no education. It was old man slips downstairs, <laughs> right? Like cat vomits on the couch, right? These were the short, that was, that was YouTube. This is early days of YouTube. So I never had ambitions to go and have 2 million subscribers and 300 million views. It was just, I like, I'm, I'm visual. I'd, like, I'd much rather see something, so I want to see it. So I wanted, I wanted to create something visual for visual learners like me. So for all the podcasts and the hype and the love, I can't I listen to zero podcasts. Because I'm, auditory is the worst. If I couldn't see you or see any, I'd be like really focused here trying to listen to what he's saying. Because I don't learn auditory very well. Um, and then people were asking questions, so I made a video response, and I thought, a video, I'll send it to that one person, and maybe they'll like it, and maybe it inspires another 100 people who might be watching it. Right. That was it, that was the start. Like, just, just try, if you got any, listen, you've listened to all these amazing speakers here today, you've written a whole bunch of ideas down in your notebook, the worst thing you can do is go home and just have an ideas notebook. Like, pick something, and just start on it, and expect to suck, and go, right? Like. The idea with the baseball flying, great, go, go home and do some kind of Easter egg. <laughs> right? And expect it to suck. Awesome, post, next. Do the next one. And, and, and maybe the greatest gift of all time, or that idea may suck for you. Awesome, how are you going to know? You won't know by thinking through it, you know by doing it. So what did you, because it seems like vulnerability, volume, uh, like I've talked about a little bit, embracing that discomfort is something that you're constantly attacking, right? And so for, for people that maybe haven't done that or, or want to want to take that step, like what will they experience and what's your advice as someone who's been there, right? Or, you know, we talked about your first video versus where you are now, there's a big difference. Yeah, so embracing vulnerability really is stop caring so much what other people think of you. And that's the thing that holds so many people back. We're afraid of judgment. We're not afraid of failing, you're afraid of failing in front of people, right? You'll sing in the shower at home, but you won't sing on the balcony out here. Because you're afraid of judgment. So, I like to, as soon as I feel myself playing small because of somebody else's opinion of me, I have to do that thing. Even if it has nothing to do with my business. Just because. So, I own a dance studio um, in Toronto, salsa dancing. Uh, largest salsa dance studio, maybe North America, but definitely Canada. And my team won a, a bachata dancing competition. And I took, it was mostly women, so I took them to a nail salon after we painted their nails. And one of the, one of the ladies asked me, hey, are you going to get your nails done? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an expression of myself. I'm guessing you walked out with painted nails? Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and the only acceptable answer is that's not an expression of myself. But in the back of my head is, I can't get my nails, that's ridiculous. It's fear of judgment, right? right? And, and I'm thinking, how long do nails last? <laughs> A week? Two weeks? I don't know. Like, how many videos am I making in that time? How many meetings or seminars or speeches am I doing? I make three to four videos a day, right? So times two weeks, it's a lot of videos. And, and for... If you're growing a YouTube channel, 80% of your views plus should be from non-subscribers. So people who don't know who you are. And so they're going to see this guy 
painted nails. And like, I can't explain the story in every video that I put in that. And so because that was part of the reason, then I had to go off and do it. Just because. And so I said, my brain color is orange, can you match my orange? And then put white racing stripes on it, just because. And so, so we did it. And then, and then ladies know you go through, because as soon as we left, my wife was in there, she got her nails on too, but I asked her to open the door for me, because I didn't want to ruin my nails. <laughs> Making, making a product that 
you love doing, if it's only for you, but nobody else loves it, you have a hobby. And that's great, it's a hobby. It might fill the soul, but it's not providing service. So you're not going to make money doing it. If you're only chasing opportunity, but you don't love it, you're going to lose because you're going up against people who love doing that thing. It's in that mix of where you love plus what there's an opportunity that you start being able to make an impact. It's interesting that you talked about impact though because you, when, we, when you showed the videos, you showed five videos, rabbit hole was your, the one you said was the most important, most proud of, but didn't get the views that the other videos got. Correct, yeah. But after you played it, it was the only video that got a rest of a coming from here. Right, right. Right? Because that's the thing that's gonna tie people to you. So in, in, in figuring out, and it's for all of you, but using it as, a, as an example, who are you? Do you want to be the face of the brand? Do you want to be able to do challenging, artistic, creative things? Or do you want to say, no, I like being digital here, I'm going to stay here forever. Because if you want to be out here, that's the group that then people will watch, and those are the people who are coming out to your events and support you on your book tour and support you on everything else you can do. Right. So that's a, uh, I know I want to answer it to, or open up the question, so, but one more that I, I feel is really pertinent, and I know a big part of your brand is, is your one thing. Right, so um, you've written a book about that, and sort of along your journey, there's your one word that you identify as. What was your process there? What's the significance, and how can we all find our one word as we as we make our way through uh, through life? So I think everybody has a one word most important for writing. I take people through a who, why, how process. So the why is your purpose comes from your pain. The how, how you got it, is a recipe to teach other people. Kind of touched on that in the deeper if you want. The first part is the who. So everybody has a one word, most important core value. Mine is believe. Everybody has something. Um, you know, these guys have legacy and perseverance, and what's yours? You gotta think of one. You gotta think of it. So yeah. great, we work through it. So <laughs> think about. Well, let's go through it. Think about who is your favorite teacher of all time? Favorite teacher of all time. Growing up, uh, Mr. Catalano, third grade, hands down. <laughs> third grade. He was great. <laughs> okay, so why? Um, because he was fun. He was fun, and it was the first time, like, you know, school's very sort of procedural. You go and you get a good grade. And he made it like a, an experience as opposed to like a check. Okay. What's your favorite movie of all time? Mm, probably The Patriot. Because? It's just badass. <laughs> uh, it's the, the hero's journey. Um, just yeah, I'm a history buff, and I just really enjoy this stuff. And who's your favorite musician of all time? Probably John Mayer. Oh, because he can do everything. He, 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 he's a brilliant guitarist, brilliant songwriter. Does all right with the ladies. <laughs> so in that mix becomes the seeds of what makes Eddie Panera tick. So he likes great experiences. Just like this third grade teacher is, well. right? So like, you got sounds so ridiculous coming back at me, like, yeah. right? So like, but this is an experience. Your videos are an experience. You're taking people on a, a sensory experience, right? Right. I would, I want to say visual, but it's not just visual. It's a sensory experience. Right. What you're doing, you're creating badass content, just like the Patriot. You want people to feel like a badass walking out. And so, these are seeds that then. Moving forward, you can now use to help you create more content. Your stuff should be an experience. It should be able to people feel like a badass. You should be able to make people feel like they can do everything. They can be the job mayor of their own life. Mm -hmm. So these things that have, like why pick came from your grade three teacher of all the teachers that you've had thrown up, it wasn't because he taught you homeroom, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> it's because your teacher taught you something more about yourself that you love, that you then want to bring to other people. And so when you figure out that path and then you narrow it down and end up getting to one word, that allows you to build a life and a business for the entrepreneurs here with a lot more purpose. So mine is belief. My parents used to always teach me that I'm having this really crime, I couldn't do anything that I believed that I could. And so now I want to hire people who like belief, right? So when I'm hiring a, a videographer, It'll be, I want a videographer who believes in entrepreneurs. That's the subject line of the job ad. And then I'll 
lead with what believe means to me. Oozing like four or five lines of belief. And what ends up happening is some people see that and say, that's the stupidest job I have ever seen in my life. This guy wants a videographer and always talking about his believing in yourself. Great. Don't apply, right? Like it's not gonna be a fit. Go go work somewhere else. And other people will see that and say, This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I love it. And that person will work harder to be with you. And so now you're putting out, it still goes back to your slide that you had, you're putting it out and then people respond to it. And so figuring that process out, yes, you know, I have the book you can go through, but thinking about all the best moments in your life. And so I encourage you to think about who your favorite teacher was, what did you love about your parents, what's your favorite song, favorite movie, your best friend, what did you love? And write down three descriptive keywords for each and then see what words pop up over and over and over and over and over again. You want more of that in your life. And you can have it with intention. I'm coming back to you with an answer, so I love it too. All right, great. Right. Right. Um, you ready to open it up for questions? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Anyone that has anything they want to ask, feel free. Joe's got the mic. Uh, so you touched on momentum, and yeah. that was one of the things we're talking about. And one of my questions is, how do you deal with a break in momentum whenever you feel like you're executing and then certain things, situations in your life, kind of put barriers in your way? I hate it so much. And then I have to get up the next day and just destroy it. The caveat is, am I proud of the reason why not? So, earlier this year I did a 90 day tour, 23 cities across the US, a speaking tour, and I, I would, if I was sick, I, would get, I, did, I had a broken neck, I did it, right? Broken neck in two spots, compressed my spine, concussion, four staples in my head, and I still went off and did my speech. That actually made me feel better about myself, even though the speech was worse, because I'm sitting here at the front with pillows and I can't move and a neck cast on. It really comes down to being proud of your effort. Right. So on the tour, I had a guy in Columbus who said, Evan, I have a goal to six days a week do a cold shower. Six days a week, that could be great, awesome. But today I didn't do it. Because it's Columbus, it's January, it's freezing. It was a really cold winter this year. And the cold water, uh, the, the heat was off in the house. So I've been freezing all day long. So I didn't have a cold shower. So should I have one? Are you, are you proud of yourself for not doing it? No. Then you have to do it. And then tomorrow's your day off, you have to do it tomorrow too. Just to show yourself. So the real question is, it's an inside game. Are you proud of the reason why you've lost momentum? And if not, then you need to double down just to do it. Interesting. Thank you. Cool. First and foremost, thank you so much for, uh, for speaking. I actually value both of you, and I've been following you for a long time. One thing that I found really interesting is that um, we had a conversation earlier about on Twitter. You used to have your Twitter as your world within, and then you went to I am Eddie Pinero. So it's a shift away from the your world within to I am Eddie Pinero, more personally you. Now, me as an entrepreneur, uh, I built a business, eventually I sold the business off. Uh, I purposely have been building businesses without using my name, because ultimately, you know, I can roll it off and need me anymore because it has its own identity. What you present is, is a very unique, very personal thing. And um, and I wanted to, I, I just want to commend you on that, but I also have had a challenging time because if I am putting myself out, and my content, I also have a YouTube channel. Um, and a lot of it, I, I put myself behind this blanket of the, the firm that I'm building rather than myself. Um, so I wanted to get your experience of this, you know, just the intimacy of what you're doing. Because the fact that I saw your videos when you the, the neck brace and everything, and the fact that you put all those things. So tell me more about that, just basically, it's your bacon, essentially. I'm what? Your bacon, you're committed, is what I'm saying. Oh, sure. Um, uh, uh, listen, if you can bring yourself to your business, it's gonna have a, a much greater connection to the people who are following you. When I'm looking at a business, I'm looking at something that I wanna run forever. I'm not, I'm not trying to build and flip anything that I'm doing. I'm bringing myself, like this is, this is my purpose, being lived out. The execution might change. YouTube may not be around in five years, awesome. It'll be VR Evan and hologram Evan beaming into your living room with content, right? Um, or, or maybe I do get sick of it and, and sell it off and somebody you know, takes over, but I'm not, it's not my game plan from the beginning, right? Um, the more you can share yourself, 
why I love these guys, um, the Hyperconscious Podcast, I was on my tour, the first time I, we did a, a podcast together, I was on my tour, I did my first stop in Pittsburgh, I'd done all day podcasts with different people, and we had 20 minutes, 20, 20 yep. minutes scheduled with my assistant, because I was just banging them out. And I, they were the last one on my calendar for the day, and we get to Pittsburgh, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to him while, like we're going over time, I get to my hotel, like going up, and I'm still talking to them, and we end up going for an hour or something plus. And I love it because their whole thing is taking the shine off of people, right? Like, tell me the thing, how we, see, we see this, let me understand what's like down here, right? And I love that, I'm like, this is great, because all I want to do is take the shine off, because they can look to the people on Instagram and YouTube and say, man, these guys are so perfect, I can never be like that, but those guys suck, <laughs> right? Like, they're dealing with the same thing that you are, right? And I mean, and look, me too, like I'm on Instagram, I have these, you know, fancy pictures and stuff, but I want to, I want to take the shine off, I want to show, I want to show me sucking at stuff. When I told my agent, this is hilarious, when I told my agent that I broke my neck in, in Denver, he said, okay, so are you coming home? Because I was only, I still have a month left on my tour. It's like, no, I'm going to try to stick it out. I'm like, I might have to, but I'll try to stick it out. But I can't do anything. Like my wife, she was on, with me on tour. She had to do everything. She had to change me. She had to, like, I couldn't, my neck was broken, right? She had to help me get out of bed. She had to change, get, push me with, you know, push my butt into the suburban that we were driving, right? Everything. She was superwoman. And then, and then my agent's just laughing on the other side of the phone. <laughs> She's just laughing at me. It's like, your wife has to change you every morning? Yeah, dude, all I can do is speak which is good for a speaking tour, but that was the only skill set I have. It's like, you need to film it. I need to film what? Your whole morning routine. What do you mean? You want me to film my wife changing me in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Right? Great. The boom, boom, boom test. I'm nervous, right? I, I've gained some weight because now I have a broken neck and I haven't been able to do anything and, and my shit isn't really shirtless videos, right? Maybe, maybe Alan over there. That's, that's not what people watch my content. <laughs> but because I was nervous, then I did it. So I woke up the next morning, I took out my phone, we did an Instagram live, and I, and I said, okay, here we are. I'm super scared, here we go. And I set up the phone and this, my wife slowly lived, she's just, five foot four, you know, Chinese woman, like, picking me up and slowly putting me out and I kept my underwear on, but otherwise, like, putting my pants on and, and then slowly getting ready and pushing me into the car and, and then we left. And, uh, and then I saved it, put his YouTube video, and, and my agent, Steve, is a New Yorker, said, did you do it? Like, yeah, man, I do it. Like, I, I love that stuff. Those challenges are what I eat, it's the best. And then to send the link, so I sent him the link and then, and then he, just starts laughing in his face. I showed it to everybody at the office and they all laughed at me. It's like, okay, I love it. But that, that personal, it doesn't mean for your, you know, uh, blockchain business, you have to, you know, wake up in your underwear and film it. <laughs> but the more you can, the more you can show the reason, I think this is the advantage that you guys have as entrepreneurs. You're going up against a big competition, right? Whatever you're doing, this is somebody bigger than you. How are you going to win your story? You care more than the big companies do. So what is your, why are you doing this thing? Why is it so important to you? If you don't have a strong why, then that's going to be a problem. But I'm assuming if your you know, purpose comes from your pain, there's a strong reason why you're doing this thing. Tell me the story. Tell me the insecurities, the vulnerabilities, what you went through. Because there's a lot of people who are currently going through the thing that you went through, and they're going to resonate with your story. So you have to share it. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Evan. Um, I follow you, Evan. Cool. I've actually done a live with you on Instagram before. I love your videos. They're very inspirational, so thank you. Um, I have a question for both of you, actually. It's the same question. Um, I'm a YouTube creator as well, and um, my channel is growing pretty rapidly. <laughs> and I wanted to know from you both, um, in growing your channels, what is the biggest personal obstacle that you had to overcome uh, being a creator on YouTube? Um, probably scalability, I think. Um, there's a lot of, for me, emotional investment in what I'm making. And so 
I have this thing where I, I want to have control over the entire process, and I want to be writing the background music and capturing the footage and speaking and editing and creating this thing. And, you know, but being pragmatic, just kind of being an entrepreneur, it's like, okay, but then you're going to grow at this rate versus, you know, the, the possibilities out there. And then you're going to say, I, I wish I just went faster. And same thing for all of it. The second part was telling your story, same thing. Like once you are comfortable with it, You'll, you'll love that you're there and you see the impact you're having on people's lives, but it's your choice. Do you want to get there in five weeks or five years? And then the same thing for negative comments. Everybody's afraid of negative comments. I don't like negative comments. But the path through that is just empathy. Right? Like, I believe humans are built to serve. Period. Like, we want to serve. And so, and I think people are good. Right? Otherwise, we'd all be dead by now. We've had the tools for many years. So if somebody's built to serve and, and is good at their core, and they're coming to your video and they don't know you and they're leaving some kind of nasty comment, what kind of negative situation do they have to be in? Like that's the heart of their day, coming to your video and, and slamming you for something. How bad does their life have to be, right? So that removes the sting out of it. I made a post um, yesterday on Twitter where I, uh, I showed the, sun, the sunrise I got up early so I can get here for this event. I showed the sunrise, and I've got this philosophy around sunshine and rainbows, sunrises and rainbows, where when you see a rainbow, people often pull over to the side of the road and they have to take a picture and they look at that rainbow, wow, it's crazy, right? And snap a picture and share. But the sunrise happens every day, and you barely notice it. The sunset, we're all the way to the sunset. How often do you go outside and look at the sunset? Not very often. But a rainbow comes up, you're telling your friend you're taking a picture, you're sharing it. It's just a frequency. But I think a, a sunrise and a sunset is actually more pretty than a rainbow. It just, it happens so frequently, we're not paying attention. So I posted that to my Twitter, and then some guy writes back to say, hey, I don't think you're looking on Instagram because there's lots of sunrise pictures. Right? Uh, just, people always look for, to, to, to the point, right? People, to his point of like putting these Easter eggs and People always look for something nasty because they hate this. he hates his life. Like whoever's putting them, they hate their own life. So my response back is sending you lots of love, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's it, that's my response. Because because when people are leaving nasty comments, I'm not actually trying to change that person who's responding to me. Although it does sometimes happen. Sometimes the next day they write again, hey, I'm really sorry, man. Yesterday I was in a really bad spot and I, it has nothing to do with you. I was just messed up. I'm not even trying to change that person. I'm trying to change the people who are watching to the, to the negative comments and it's, ooh, how's it going to respond? I don't want to dive into the toxicity. I just send love. And what it does is gives, it gives tools for other people who are dealing with hate to handle it themselves. So every time you get a nasty comment and you deal with it through love, you're actually giving a shield to other people who are being creative to be able to receive hate and give back love. I see entrepreneurs and especially creatives as trees. Okay? Go with me here. We're all trees. What does a tree do? A tree breathes in poison, carbon dioxide. You have too much poison, it's carbon dioxide. It's poison for us. You breathe it in. What does a tree do? Eats it, grows from it, and it spits out oxygen positivity for the world. I think that's our job as leaders, as creators, as entrepreneurs. Your job is to eat the negativity, grow from it, but not just make you strong, but spit out positivity for everybody else around you. So, all true, I, no, I don't get that much hate. I mean, I'm spreading belief on my channel, it's only positive. But we'll still get people who come in and leave nasty comments. I'll, I'll send them. As long as it's against me and not against somebody else. Like if you're attacking somebody in my community and calling them a racist name or whatever, I'll ban you. But if you're coming after me, awesome. Sending you lots of love, Sheila. Right? And also on top of that, like I recently saw an article that fear of that type of online harassment is the number one thing that stops YouTube creators. Right? Not, um, cost or time or anything like that's literally fear of response and so an effective way is to literally invert it 
where it's not only like, yeah, it comes, and yeah, you deal with it, and yeah, you have empathy, which you need all those things, but it's almost like, good, it's a benchmark, because if you're not getting some type of pushback, you're not growing fast enough, right? I always chuckle when I go, like, you go to Bieber's latest music video, arguably a top five entertainer in the world right now, 90% of it's just him getting dragged in the comments. It's just, it's, it's par for the course. You can't have anything great without picking up some of that minutia that you don't want. Um, or do you? That's the question, right? It's just par for the course. I want to dive into it. Like, run, run, run into discomfort. The first rule. Amen. Yeah. Right? Run, run into that rain. Because it, it allows you to show yourself what you're made of, but also it allows you to be the shield for other people. And they'll be inspired by how you're responding to it. You do difficult things. You love difficult things. You, Evan, made the statement earlier that you'll never win doing work that you hate. Mm -hmm. So my issue is I hate social media. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy the way it makes people act. I don't like, you know, people get so focused on how they look and all those groupthink antics that come from social media. But I need social media to promote, to promote my business. So how can I change my perspective on social media to be less of a I hate this to more of a I need this? And what do you guys think? It, it's be the change that you want to see. Be real. I'm looking at, so I'm doing a tour next year. I'm looking at doing another 90 days on the road, 20 something cities for my new book. And I'm thinking of live streaming the whole thing, but eight to 12 hours a day. Everything, like here's my real life. And I was thinking about it because two days ago I was doing burpees at home. There's no burpees like, you hate burpees? You know burpees? Okay. Sometimes I say Canadian things and people don't get it. We're talking about butter tarts and they've been with butter tarts are and like, I don't know what butter tart is. Anyway, we all know burpees. Great. <laughs> if you go to Canada, you have to have a butter tart. And I'm and I'm dying on the burpees. Like I can't even get halfway through the burpees. And I'm still recovering because my neck, I'm not done physio and I can't actually, you know, Alan would destroy me in workouts and stuff for sure, because I'm still getting better. But I'm thinking, imagine if this was live stream. Like me dying doing burpees. And not a good dying, not like, yeah, I just crushed a thousand burpees and here I am. No, like I did 20 and I'm on the floor <laughs> dying, right? And I'm thinking, I'm, I can't wait to live stream this. I can't wait to, to actually show the real on social. And I know some people in the live chat will be laughing at me to say, this guy can't even do 20 burpees, are you kidding? And they don't know the story, they don't know what's happened, right? And then other people might stand up, but then how I respond to it, to the point about haters, say, listen, this is what happened, and this is, the, this is the most I got, I'm proud of my effort. Showing the real could be how you win. Social media in itself is not, uh, it's just marketing, it's not, it's not bad inherently, it's the behavior on it that you're not a fan of, right, so change the behavior. Whatever it is that you want to be doing, put it out there, and show it. And not everybody's going to resonate with it, but the people who you'll connect with the most are the ones who will resonate with your content, and they're going to be the ones who end up buying your products and services. And from the perspective of someone that's sort of private, so I, I understand like the usefulness to your point. It's like it's a, it's not a luxury now. It's like your business needs it. And what I've found when I thought about it is I don't think I've ever opened Instagram, scrolled through, closed the app. And felt better about myself closing it than when I opened it, right? It's only so what I've tried to do is stop using it for consumption and use it as uh, uh, sort of a way to articulate my thoughts and ideas, and it becomes kind of a fun thing. Um, it's just for me, it was a mental shift because again, I'm not someone that's like, yeah, this burger is awesome, you know, it's just not, I don't like to share those things. Um, but you gotta, in some regards, so how can you make it fun? For me, it was look at it as a tool, as a way to, to uh, you know, express your art, not a way to consume, because that's where I usually find myself in an area that's not doing anything good for me. But you can turn it into something that if you loaded every day, you found awesome, and you felt better. Just pick who you follow. Like if you follow DeVazio from now on, you're gonna see his trucker series, helping kids, right? Like, you should feel better. If I follow you, if you follow me, if you, there's lots of people, Alan, they're posting positive content. You could feel better about yourself. It just may not be what most people are putting out. Just like when you turn on the, the TV, you overread the news comment, most of the stuff is still going to be negative. You choose to put more positivity in your feed. 
right? I agree with you on consumption versus creation. But you don't have to hide from it too, just follow people who inspire you. All right, so I got, oh, my dilemma. Um, so since you guys are both, this question for both of you. Since you guys both do a lot on YouTube, a lot of subscribers, where do you guys see the platform going over the next couple of years in regards to growth, reach, and that type of stuff? Um, I don't know if I'm out of, like, I can speak to that algorithmically or, you know, from an, I know, you know, and if you can attest to this, the length of the video matters a lot more than it used to. It's duration, they value keeping people on the platform. It seems like they're moving towards more of a live um, strategy as well. So, long story short, when I, I forget who was up here, but Evan was in the back, I went down and sat down next to him. And he goes, how's your YouTube channel doing? And I said, it's doing well, it's growing. And he pulls out my phone and goes through the analytics and it's like circling areas where uh, there's opportunity based on certain metrics, certain things I'm doing. And so that was kind of a, it's, it's amazing that you asked this question, right? Because I'm coming from more of a uh, emotional platform or, or emotional um, background where he's like, yeah, but you need to do this. You need to change this. You need to change this. Um, so, long story short, you got you're the numbers guy. So I think, for, for, okay, content creators, I think YouTube, if you have options, YouTube should be your home. Because it's the only place where your content lives forever. Instagram, Snap, Facebook, Twitter, all of it. Two weeks later, nobody cares about what you posted. But I edit with videos that are multiple years old that are still generating views, traffic, attention, awareness, lead subscribers, right? You want to put somebody into your funnel, YouTube should be the place. Now, if you want to sell your business in six months, don't do YouTube. It doesn't make sense. It takes too long to get started, mm -hmm. right? But if you, if you are building a brand that you want to live forever, YouTube is the only place, more than anything, more than podcasting anywhere, that the videos last forever. YouTube is also the most data-rich platform where there's a thing, we'll go a little deep for a second, called eyes retention, where you can see where people are leaving your video. So it shows you, oh, when this happened, people left your video. So when this happened, people stayed. And then every now and then you'll, you'll see a spike, it'll go up. How does that happen that, that people, like 70% of the people are watching and then 120% of people are watching, how does that even happen? They rewound the video to that part because of an Easter egg or something happened, you said something. Right? For any thought leadership kind of content, you, you're, you're the expert sharing wisdom. If it ever spikes, that is then the clip you take to Instagram. That's the clip you cut for Twitter and LinkedIn video. YouTube is the home, and then you cut the pieces to go everywhere else. 10 minute videos plus, super important. Um, and then the ultimate game is not search. This is where people get messed up. The game is not search is what we're talking about. <laughs> It's not search, stop focusing on search. It's suggested. Suggested are the videos down the side and then the videos at the bottom. When you go to YouTube and you're searching for something, you'll find, you'll find one video, but then you'll consume eight more from the recommended videos. That's the game. Search gives you the one video, suggested gives you eight videos of people's history. So when we're looking at, this is a big area for editing, because search was his number one opportunity. It's the number one source of traffic. We've got to have suggestions and then browse and then search. And then give them tactics on how to do it. Right? So you're focusing first on suggested against your own videos, and then ultimately you want to rank against other people's videos out there. But YouTube takes the most patience. It's the hardest to build. So what about algorithmically? Because I've noticed, you know, this is kind of piggybacking off that question, over the years they change, right? It wasn't always they valued 10 minutes. It used to be views, it used to be thumbs up, and we're talking, you know, that's evolved. Yeah. How much attention have you paid to that? Yeah. Is that something you're always aware of? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, of course. But it's the best. Listen, anytime there's a big algorithm change, you should get pumped. It's the best. What do you mean, oh, pumped? Pumped, yeah. Celebrate, throw a party. Anytime there's a big algorithm change. Because what's going to happen? Everybody who's ahead of you is going to be complaining. You're going to learn it, you're going to figure it out, and crush it. Right? Like it's the, just go through. It's awesome. To get started in an industry that is 100 years old and never changes is really difficult. Right. 
So the next question is how do you stay ahead of that curve so that you can be one of those people first and foremost, you know, changing your videos so that they conform. So you need, you need to either be in it or you need to have somebody who's really helping you along, right? So I'm obsessed. I love making data-driven decisions. I want to know this works, this doesn't work. Even for my thumbnails, I've tested 1,200 now different variations of thumbnails to see which one does the best. And so if you're all in on the creative camp and you hate numbers and don't like spreadsheets, okay, great. But you need somebody to help you with that. Maybe not at the beginning. The beginning, just great. Don't let that prevent you from, don't let any excuse prevent you from getting started. But how do you stay ahead of the game and keep going? You have somebody on your team who's going to help you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. We have one here? Oh, up front here. Oh, we have one back, okay. Hi. Hi. My name's Tina. I wanted to thank both of you, Eddie and Evan. You're amazing. I do follow yeah. both of you. And I actually wanted to speak into two things. The first is I wanted to contribute possibly to the young lady that was speaking before uh, that might support you. I myself, I just turned 50, I have three teenage kids, I have, oh, have always been against social media. Can't stand it, don't want to know about it. And finally I realized for where I'm going, I'm a coach and going to be a transformational trainer. I actually just flew in this morning from Lewis House Summit of Greatness. I was supporting that and those people there and working with one of the trainers. So I put myself on a stretch last month to go to go to a Facebook Live every day at 12 noon for 10 minutes and use the social media as like a free playground. And I would come out and say, hey, I'm doing, you know, this is free, available for all of us. Come out, share what you're up to. You never know what, what will come of it to create that consistency, 21 days to change a habit. So I started every single day for 21 days at noon on time, trying to practice to keep it to 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. And it's amazing what has already come of just doing that. So just do it. It's like one of those, just freaking do it. I just decided on a Sunday night after floating in a salt tank that what can I do to stretch myself and just did it. <laughs> so now everyone's like, oh, you just decided in the last three weeks, now you're a social media queen and you couldn't, couldn't stand it. So I don't know if that supports anyone, but it really is just doing it. I had no idea what the, what, what you guys were going to be speaking into today, and this has created tremendous value for me. So thank you again. And my question actually was, um, there are so few women oh, that man. speak in, in speaking and, and motivation and transformation. And so that's the path I'm on. But my question is, why do you think, from your perspective, that there are so few women in the space? I don't know. Like, this kills me. I hate it. I fight with my team every single week that we need more women. And it's a competition yes. of, yeah, but, but like, it's, it's great in theory, but then how, right? Because, because I profile a bunch of people every week and I always want to have a woman on every week and we can't always do it. Like if we're doing billionaires, we got Oprah, we got Sarah Blakely, and like, that's it. Um, so it's a combination of one, there's not enough people doing it. Even the ones who are aren't creating a lot of content. I was so excited when Mel Robbins went daily. I don't know if you guys follow Mel. Yes, I do. Five so seconds like, like a peer. But then she stopped. Like she stopped. Yeah. Her content is fizzling out. Marie Forleo was a, another great, like early shining star, and, and she's only doing interviews now, not really sharing her story. Um, there's, I mean, there's, there's some, but the, the the volume isn't there, and the and the quality isn't there, unfortunately. So. I see part of my role as, as trying to shine a light on, on different communities, and so we're always looking and struggling and, and fighting to make that happen, but just to the last point, like, go be the change. Go be the person. Right? Awesome, then I get to follow up with you. Yes, <laughs> but you gotta be good, right? So, like, let's of go. Of course. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go, ladies. Let's go. Let's go. So my question kind of goes off the Instagram part of just in social media in general, how do you stay present in like what you're doing day to day and being like present in the moment versus also sharing with other people on social media um, kind of like your actual like what you are doing and being real. So like with 
the live stream that you're going to do. Also staying present, mindful in the moment, where you're at, who you're with. So with the live stream, I'm not going to be, it's not meant to be a show where I'm talking to the camera the whole time. It's meant to be show my life and what's happening. Basically like you're my other friend that's with us on this as opposed to me hosting the show and not enjoying the moment. Yeah, I guess like also just like creating content on this and part of it is it's your job, but like so, you know, I, I work a full-time job, I'm married, I have a husband, we're training for triathlon, and then also sharing content, it takes away from whoever I'm with. So like what would you like recommend or like your perspective on staying mindful but also being able to post content and share and Instagram and all of that um, and edit you might have. Yeah, I mean, it's a judgment call for you. If, if you're ever at the point where you're feeling like you're not enjoying your life because you're making content, you're going to lose. Right? I feel like I'm taking people on a journey with me and it's like, imagine you're feeling it. If, you, if your mom wanted to see what you were up to and you're going to film a video for her, what would you do? And then film that video for her, or your best friend who, who's in the hospital and can't come on the trip with you, you're gonna film the video for her, that, film that video. Most of the time I'm filming, um, there'll be some times where I just, it doesn't feel right, or I'm, I'm too lost in the moment, and, and I don't remember to pull out my phone, or I just don't want to, because I'm enjoying this too much. So I don't. You have to be happy with, it's a balance question. Right? How much time should you spend with your kids versus your husband versus work? You have to be happy with the, with the balance. You may not even have to have vlog kind of content. Maybe it's talking head content. Maybe there's another format you can do. Or maybe you book times like every morning from 9 to 10 you film a video instead of showing your day. There's, there's a million ways to, you have to test it and see. But at the end of the day, for balanced questions, you, you try on a bunch of hats and you see what fits. You see what's, what you feel good with, and then that's what you release. And I'm, I'm big on experimentation. So I remember you know, there's certain situations where I have you know, not a lot of time, where you have, you know, because of other obligations, you have that window. Um, and I would always use that time to explore. Like if you sort of looked at the book of content that I put out, I mean, I have videos where I do this Thursday, I'm like, gonna do sing or song like thing, get my guitar, write a song. Um, you know, compose background music, just do a speech, talk on the, you know, talk to the mic, create um, a full cinematic thing, like, and, and every time I know I have this little window, it's like, well, let's try something new, and what happens is you sort of weed out the things that aren't important, you find out what it is you do gravitate towards, and then, you know, you make time accordingly. That's how I always approach that. If you have a podcast or interview show and want me to be a guest on it, I have two options for you. There's a link right there next to me. Go click it, and I look forward to being a guest on your show.